Good to go, everybody. Hear me all right? Yes. Cool. Welcome. Welcome to our session, um, Sierra Club case study. It's uh, how Drupal and Black Mesh help us save the planet. Uh, my name is Ron Johnson. I work with Black Mesh. Um, I have been working with the company since 2011. Uh, I've been in the host industry about 14 year years now, mainly as a systems network guy. Uh, got into Drupal when I started with Black Mesh. Loved it a lot. Met these guys. Um, this is uh, Jesse Brown here. Um, he's been with Sierra Club since 2014. Um, started Drupal when he started with Sierra Club. And uh, prior to the club, he has built and uh, ran his own sites. Um, next to him on the left is Adrian. Um, he's been with Sierra Club since 2002. Um, he's been doing uh, web development since 96 and working in Drupal since 2011. A little, uh, little bit about Black Mesh and how we work um, at a high level. Um, most of you all probably seen us around Drupal shows and whatnot. We are a managed services and cloud solutions provider. Um, we were founded in 2003. We focus on Drupal, but that's not all we do. Um, so we do lots of other fun things as well. Um, our headquarters out in Ashburn, Virginia, where most of our guys are. We have other offices out in Vegas and other locations. Um, we are again a solutions provider. We're a security focused company, so we have uh, we handle lots of compliance hosting, uh, specifically PCI, HIPAA, um, as well as FedRAMP and things of that nature. Uh, another little fact: uh, we own 100% of our network and hardware in the Tier 4 data centers we leverage. So we have uh, various OpenStack, public and private clouds. We do physical boxes, firewalls, you name it. Um, point being, we are not leverage another provider, it's our network, our platform. Howdy all. Uh, how many people know who the Sierra Club is? Just out of curiosity. Okay. Does anyone not know who the Sierra Club is? <laughs> all right, cool. And is there any members in the audience? Thank you all for your support. I really, really we really appreciate it. Um, so we've been on Drupal since 2011, and uh, we were originally hosted on Windows machines for, for various reasons, which I'll get into a little bit more. Uh, and you know, the Sierra Club, we do, we do a lot of different things, both as a national organization and as a local organization. So we're a big, messy organization, so as you expect, our sites are kind of big and messy as well. Um, and so we have you know, our main website, which also includes our magazine and some of our chapters, and then we have individual chapter sites, and then some sites for various specialty campaigns that we have around. Um, so we really, uh, we had, a, we had a, a moment last year where we were moving offices. We moved from San Francisco to Oakland, and we took it as a, as a moment to like look at our servers and really decide if we wanted to stick with Windows. Um, and you know, just looking at Drupal on a Windows, it's, it has some obvious challenges. There's just lots of little quirky things about file paths and stuff that, that made for weird bugs that we spent a lot of time trying to troubleshoot. And um, another, another big thing is like there was, no, like there was no set of tools that were really out there used by the Drupal community that we could just like glom on and take on as, as our own. And, help us with our flow and stuff, so we ended up like creating our own processes, which we had to maintain, so it was always, always, always challenges there. So yeah, so we did like our own homegrown tools. Um, and I'll let Jesse talk about some of our other things we were thinking about as we were thinking about. Hi. Um, so, uh, yeah, we have, I guess our structure internally in the Sierra Club uh, is kind of small and pretty lean. Uh, as far as developers that work with Drupal go, um, until about a week ago, Adrian and I were 100% of that team, and now we have like a third guy, which we're pretty stoked about. Um, <laughs> And then we had like an internal uh, IT support team as well, and I guess those guys were familiar with Windows in their domain, um, but they didn't really know anything about Drupal, and I didn't know anything about Drupal either when I was hired by the club. I was like, oh, I love the club, I'll learn it, cool. Uh, I wanna help. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I don't know, like, said, like Adrian said, it was kind of always a bit 
frustrating to be like, well, we have this problem and we could use this open source library, but it doesn't run on Windows IIS. Uh, so it was good for us to get the opportunity to get away from there. Um, uh, and yeah, I don't know, we were always kind of uh, wishing we had more support, I guess. So moving to a LAMP stack was really helpful for us and moving to uh, Black Mesh, which, uh, which obviously has the expertise and the support infrastructure was, was pretty helpful. Um, we had a bunch of challenges with uh, configuration and migration. We had, I think at the time when we were about to switch over, we had 75 plus sites uh, in a big sprawling multi-site dock route and we paired that back to about 45, uh, which was a good start. Um, we're trying to reduce that number still, but it is how it is. Uh, we didn't really have um, anything like Varnish before in our stack, so adding that in uh, has been really cool, but obviously it brings its own challenges as well. And we needed uh, our provider to work with, uh, with our own um, CDN. We're using Capsula. Uh, and I don't know, there's been a bunch of configuration challenges to solve. Um, and we had to consider whether we wanted to keep multi-site or like split them all up into 45 different repositories and all of that. So. We had a bunch of decisions to wade through, which was uh, definitely a bit of a head trip. Um, and I guess when we were looking for providers, uh, that kind of got like to go through and sift through all of the different options kind of came to me. Uh, so we considered a whole bunch of different things. And I guess internally, we had a lot of different opinions uh, to manage and, and priorities. but. The, the big picture stuff that it came down to was that we wanted to be on an open source stack. We wanted to get away from proprietary stuff. Um, I personally was pretty uh, interested in going with someone who had their own infrastructure and wasn't just like buying uh, inventory from AWS and marking it up or whatever. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I kind of really wanted people who, had, who knew their own system and knew their own stack really well. Um, probably because of my background of just trying to figure everything out myself. <laughs> um, which is, you know, I don't know, it is what it is. We wanted people who had Drupal experience, obviously, but we also, it, to me personally, it was also appealing to work with someone who also had experience beyond Drupal, because Drupal can be pretty Drupal specific. Um, and, uh, and support was a big deal for us, because let's face it, we're a small team and we don't know what we're doing, we really don't, so we need help. <laughs> Um, so uh, support was one of the things I really looked at and, uh, and considered pretty seriously. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we've ended up in a pretty good place. Uh, it's, it's definitely been a lot of work to transition them over and there was like, there's been a, like a lot of bugs, uh, but they've pretty much all been fixed as they've come up, which has been pretty great. And uh, I think you couldn't like take what we had off Windows and put it on LAMP and not to expect to have like issues come up. Uh, so it's been, it's been a good process uh, and, and we, I don't know, when did we do as March last year, I think? I think, I don't know, March, April, May, I don't know, sometime in the first or second quarter last year. We've been on, the, on uh, Black Mesh for a while now. Um, and yeah, I first came across them, I guess, at, uh, at DrupalCon in Austin and I was at their booth because they had beer that year. Um, <laughs> Which was great. I noticed no beer this year, Ryan. Well, we'll see next year. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I was just there, and I, I talked to someone in the line, and you know, they come and scan your badge and have a quick chat about your, whatever you're doing or whatever, and that was nice. And uh, and a year later in LA, the same guy came back and recognised me and asked me follow-up questions from the conversation a year ago. <laughs> Which uh, and they had beer that year too which was great. Um, <laughs> uh, and anyway, like a, maybe a year after that or six months after that, we kind of seriously started um, uh, looking at all of our options and, and this, is, this is where we've landed. Uh, uh, and it comes, we bought the DevOps tool as well, Cascade Black Mesh has a DevOps tool which has definitely made our life easier. Um, some of the issues we've had, I guess, have been around uh, like the, the custom process that we had that Adrian was talking about before was largely to manage our updates and that was running in PowerShell and Windows and it was somewhat brittle and it worked kind of okay but 
I never really knew any of the Windows like operating system stuff, so when it broke, I just didn't really know <laughs> what to do about it. Um, and now we run all that stuff on Jenkins using Drush, which is definitely like, uh, it's probably taken a two hour a week task to about a 15, 20, I don't know, maybe 30 minute task sometimes. So it's been, there have been a lot of benefits for us, uh, for sure. Um, we've got some really sweet monitoring set up with their platform, uh, a lot of automated alerts. We've got, you know, just normal uh, alerts that check for strings at the bottom of all of our sites, and if they're not there, they fire an alert. And we've got some other kind of um, stuff that we try, we run like automated checks on our dev and staging environments for, you know, the odd module out there in the contrib land that will suddenly stop rendering images and give you a text string instead. Um, we have uh, automated alerts uh, that fire if, uh, if that occurs, and so we try and catch that stuff on dev and stage now, which is really nice. We still totally eyeball stuff in the browser as part of our process, um, but we have at least some of the, the more notorious stuff um, uh, automated. So we've got a long way to go, I think, in terms of our own internal DevOps process, but we've come a long way on the platform that we're on, which has been really nice. Uh, and we've been able to integrate some custom rules with Varnish, uh, so like certain um, certain pages on certain sites, we're able to exclude from caching or set really like granular caching limits uh, if we have specific needs for some pages to be updated like every two minutes or rather than every 15 compared to others. So a lot of flexibility has come with it and a lot of support, uh, which has been really great because um, there's definitely been times where we really need uh, the help with a small team. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of part of our story. Appreciate that, Jesse. i um, going to talk a bit about the solution, how it works, uh, what these guys are running on the server side. Um, and we'll open it up to questions at the end if there are any. Um, so we have Sierra Club, obviously, it's their front-facing site, needs to be a you know, face of the company kind of thing. So we have an HA solution. Um, if we you know, lose a server, we're going to keep the site online. Um, as Jesse was mentioning, the support, uh, we wrap unlimited 24-7, 365 technical support and monitoring around the site and all the services. Um, it's obviously tuned for Drupal with some of these components here in the image like Varnish, OpCache, MemCache, typical um, performance tuning tools that you guys have heard a thousand times, but we will work with the Sierra Club, tune them specific to the site, and you know, as Jesse was mentioning, they have some custom requirements there. Um, we also assisted with the migration, um, did all the heavy lifting of pulling the, the site off their platform internally and get it on Black Mesh and working with them to test it. Um, and then we kind of tied everything together with uh, our cascade tool that uh, essentially there's another slide on it, but it's essentially a web interface that uh, integrates with uh, Git, Jenkins, a few other things on the back end. And um, here, let's just go to that slide. Um, so here's a, a quick screenshot of it. It's going to allow you to essentially move code in between development, staging, live environments. Um, you can copy databases, um, you can restart services, your web services, uh, varnish, things of that nature. You can set up users, groups, different levels of permissions if you only want certain folks running uh, or working on certain sites, things of that nature. Um, and then if uh, anybody falls outside of like this cascade solution here, we can, uh, we create it in house so we are able to uh, make modifications to that uh, depending on what the uh, needs are. Um, so all in all, like, I mean, our experience with Black Mesh has been pretty awesome. I mean, I think the, just, just from a support perspective of generally when we submit a ticket, we hear back within, within often within an hour, if not just, if not sooner and, you know, Sometimes a little longer, but not often. And you know, it's not that they always know the answer right away. And sometimes you have to work, work. You have to know what to ask to to get to the answer. But it's been really great being able to rely on that in a really really big way. Um, you know, I don't think we did like any particular benchmarking, but like the the, the traffic after the election, as as you might expect, like really hit hit all of our pages really hard and. Our dot or our regular website, our main website, didn't even blink. Uh, some of our other services off of uh, Salesforce actually did. Um, so I think that's a, a, a good testament. Um, 
you know, I th they've also helped us do a bunch of planning. They've helped with Jenkins uh, to get our, as Jesse was talking about, to get our um, update process working. Um, we're talking to them about uh, get, doing HTTP, HTTPS everywhere. Uh, they helped us uh, get a composer repository working and troubleshooting some stuff around that. Um, and then, you know, so our internal IT folk, they have plenty of other things to do, so we freed up a lot of time for them with this, with this solution, so it's been awesome. Um, so just a, just a final, final bit. Uh, my dad always tells the story. He's, uh, he's, an, he's an engineer. He's a mechanical engineer. He worked for Ford a long time, and he always quotes this guy, Dr. Deming, there's no substitute for knowledge. And so there's two things to that. One is like, you know, Black Bash, they know certain things. Like they don't, they're not, they're not gonna solve all your Drupal problems. They're gonna solve certain, certain aspects of that. Um, so you're, you're, still, you're still in charge of like making your code work, of making the decisions about choosing between options. They can help you get between options and do a lot for you, but like ultimately you still gotta like, you still gotta figure it out. So it's not that you can be a total noob and use black mesh and hope that everything's just gonna work right. Like you have to, you do have to learn that step. Um, so like just knowing, knowing the good questions to ask, uh, both of support and of yourself, like it's, it's hard work, but it's, uh, for us it's been, it's been really awesome with black mesh uh, getting to those, to the right answers. So thank you for your time. Do we have a couple minutes for questions? Yeah, uh, we have a few minutes for any questions. Should anybody have any, uh, please speak up. Or see us afterwards. Um, I had a question about sort of, um, I know you guys have different chapter sites, and I was just wondering about what the rollout looks like for those. Do you need to have to coordinate every time, or you want a multi-site? Like, how is that working with many different sites? Sure. Uh, we originally we originally were building individual sites in a in a multi-site for them, um, but uh, we eventually gave that up as a model because it was it was a little too hard for our chapter volunteers to really to really get into that. So currently we have an organic group system within our main site, which is which is working really well. So people seem to be happy with it. Multi-part question. Your um, Windows infrastructure that you migrated from, was that an internal infrastructure or was that um, cloud-based? Uh, it was internal. Internal. So were there any webs at the, uh, at the completion of the migration, was there any um, web services or any services that you had to keep internal or you, were you able to migrate everything to the cloud? Uh, we, ha we, have a, we still actually have a few things running on a Windows server. Um, okay. Some content we decided we didn't, we didn't have the capacity to migrate. Uh, okay. And a, a couple of websites that we're sort of waiting for other solutions that still haven't happened yet. So. Okay. And final, final question. If you had any advice to give to an organization cl considering a cloud migration, what would it be? Uh, uh, lots of planning. That would be okay. my immediate answer. Okay. Uh, and think about it more. Yeah. I, uh, I guess having led our project of finding a vendor, my advice would be like to really clarify what's going to be the most important to you once you're on the cloud infrastructure and what okay. sort of services and what you want your experience to be like if you need to communicate with that vendor. Okay. Like uh, because there there are like all of the options in between. Uh, you could look at something like Rackspace, where they provide awesome system admin support and no application level support at all. Right. Or you could look at um, someone that'll have like really uh, high level, like application level support, but they'll charge you per support ticket. All right. Uh, and so if support's a big deal for you, I'd really like ask a lot of questions from all the vendors about exactly what their support system looks like. All right. I mean, I know for us, we've opened a couple of hundred tickets with these guys. Uh, and if we'd been with other vendors, we wouldn't have been able to open that many because it wouldn't have been financially viable. So that was one of the things that I really looked at in a lot of detail is what the support offerings were like. All right. Um, and I'd also ask them like uh, where they're getting their service space from. Like, is it theirs or are they getting it from somewhere? If they're getting it somewhere else, 
what are they offering as a software layer on top of that and how's that going to aid your workflow? All right. I, I think workflow is the other stuff we looked at really carefully, like, you know, are there automated processes to deploy code from like, from different environments between dev and staging or just pull a DB down from prod and just inject it into your dev really easily? Like, though I think the support and the workflow uh, were, were two of the biggest issues for us, I think, that we looked in. and. I think once we realized that those were really important to us, we had a long list of questions, man, and we spent like hours on the phone with these guys and others as well, like just really taking the time to understand each offering, because they all have pros and cons. Right. And I would just give that discovery a lot of time, and like Adrian said, a lot of planning. Cool. Thank you, guys. It was a great presentation. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Hi, this is, this is a question for Blackmesh. Do you guys... Um, you talked about uh, dev stage prod as a, as a process. Do you also have the capability of like uh, spinning up some sandboxes for other types of testing that are not going to go through that process? Yeah, whatever you need. I mean, so that's the typical setup, dev stage live. But, you know, we have other clients that have other requirements. Maybe they have multiple dev environments, multiple staging. They have test boxes, utility boxes, whatever. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, we're a solutions provider and whatever you need, we can typically meet 100% of the requirements. So it's, it's no issue. Thanks. You're welcome, thank you. Hi, also for Black Mesh. Um, just started building a site with you guys and I didn't come across the cascade thing. Um, is that, gotcha. do all your customers get No, no. You, so with us, I mean, Cascade is available, but with our flexibility, we don't force you to use the tool. So you can come in and you can have us install whatever tools you would require, you know, Drush, Git, whatever else it may be, or you can use a Cascade tool. So let's, let's have a conversation offline after this, if you don't mind, and uh, we can chat sure. about it. Can you put that slide up again? Or? Yeah, actually, um, okay. I'll, I'll send you a URL that gives you like a five-minute demo, a live demo on the site. Um, We'll take a look at that. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. You have another question? Are you uh, yeah, we should be. Okay. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for your time, everyone. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I remember. Let me check the site. 